Okay, welcome to the Murray Cup 2016. This is the red group. It's going to be We Kinda Suck versus Not Team Fish. Game one. I'm General Jeevikus. I'm joined today by Xenotron and Matsu from Destination Requiem. How are you doing today, guys? Ten seconds remaining. Hey, General. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Radiant team. Yeah, not too bad. We just had uh, we just had that game with um, Team Itari versus uh, Team Vimbaga. I was expecting it to be a lot uh, a lot more even, but Itari actually took the series 2-0, putting them top of their group. Uh, potential contenders for Destination Requiem. Uh, quick comment on the ban so Dyer far. Team OD ban. banned out. I think 90% uh, ban continues for uh, the tournament so far. Invoker also banned out there. Uh, you guys uh, ever fear those particular heroes? To be honest, there's a... Uh, uh, with a lot of these heroes, they are scary and they do really well in the mid game. That's uh, the mid game seems really important in this meta. But there's if you if you just make sure you've got heroes that are keeping making sure these these heroes don't get enough farm for the mid game, they shouldn't be a problem. And by the time it gets to late game, they aren't too much of a problem. Yeah, I have to agree. They are they are counterable, uh, but we also see Death Prophet and Earth Spirit being taken out of there. Again, very much meta heroes, but uh, Vengeful Spirit uh, picked up first by We Kind of Suck. Um, that's probably going to be a hero for Cursed as I expect, or possibly maybe. Um, nah, it's going to be it's going to be Cursed as or Copless I expect, but probably Cursed as. Yeah, Vengeful is a really strong hero in this meta. Yeah, I mean, we were we were looking at it the other day there. We were trying to decide whether or not uh, Ags remaining. or um, Aether Lens was the way to go as far as uh, utility items remaining. on the hero. I would say if you go and support uh, Aether Lens, is pretty good because you that extra swap range is always nice. And when it's level one or level two, the, sw the swap isn't that great either. Also gives longer range on the stun, which is always useful. But if you're a core, you're going to be building stat items or damage items, and you'll want that Ags for a, basically a second life. And it lowers the damage of everyone else on the other team, and uh, your illusion will increase the damage of everyone on your team. So there's about a 60 to 70% damage swing in the middle of a team fight, which completely turns the tides. Yeah, absolutely. I hate when I'm the person that kills Vengeful Spirit and I've got that aura on me for whatever time it takes for her to come back up, especially if I'm Necro. Um, not so much of an issue for right clicks, though. Um, yeah, so um, I wonder if we'll get to see remaining. Uncle Bulgaria's uh, Lone Druid in this matchup. Uh, he has been playing support pretty much constantly, so I doubt we'll get Dyer to see it, but I'd, I'd really love to see him in action. It's one of his core heroes there. Uh, Disruptor and Sand King, though, picked up for uh, Not Team Fish. Do we think the Sand King is going to jungle or be support, or, or how, how do you think that's going to play out? I think Sanking should go off lane. Uh, Sanking jungle is a bit greedy in my opinion and can lose the lanes for the team. Uh, so it's always good to put them as an off lane hero. And we can see that the Disruptor Sanking, they're looking for a massive team fight. So I think we kind of suck should really pick up a silencer or someone with a silence to stop the initiations from no, not team fish. Yeah, Pitchwife does like to play the Sand King uh, in the support role. Team um, I don't know whether or not we'll see him go into the off into the off lane, um, but yeah, I mean he certainly played it in a few matches before. Um, obviously, Blink Burrow Strike uh, with Ags on Sand King is uh, is pretty ridiculous in this meta. I really like the uh, Ags pick up as well, obviously remaining. for the team fight potential. Corrosive, uh, the uh, the exploding stuff on everyone is really good. But Undying Band Dyer out by We Kind of Suck. And also uh, the Slark banned out by Not Team Fish. So, I mean, they definitely, I think, have been doing a little bit of research here. Uh, the Slark ban makes sense here, I think, because they're looking for the big, uh, they're looking for a big team fight. And Slark's a good hero at looking for pickoffs. He doesn't really, I'm, I'm not really sure he wants to team fight too often. He's really good at getting pickoffs. So, obviously, they, they just don't want any heroes to annoy them in between those big cooldowns on their ults. Yeah, it is one of Paul's uh, Paul's favourite heroes as well. I think it's his most Five played hero in this particular remaining. meta. Um, so no surprise to see it banned out there. Not sure where the Doom's going to go yet. Time. I'm not sure who's going to play that. But I mean, I really like Doom at the moment as well. He's he's, he's really quite strong uh, in the core position. Radiant team and uh, I mean, you can kind of catch out guard there. Once, once you start to get uh, about level 11 or so, the Doom begins to become a real issue, I think. 
It's Pector banned out as well uh, by Not Team Fish and Omni uh, banned out by We Kinda Suck. Omni have been causing a lot of problems for people in the tournament so far. Uh, not so many heroes um, able to deal with it. I mean, I do like Spectre as a counter to Omni and uh, Ricky and basically anyone with a Diffusal Blade just to sort of seconds, so you can at least remaining. still focus down one target with the, uh, you know, by purging off of Five the Guardian seconds Angel. Remaining. Um, obviously, with the changes to Diffusal Blade as well, you could potentially just Diffusal everyone in one Reserve particular team. Reserve time. Dire team pick. So it looks like this silencer could be even in, in a carry position role Radiant here. Uh, or hmm, if he goes to support, I don't think that's going to be really that good for them. Because we can just suck up Doom, and if they pick up Lich, Lich Doom is a really strong dual lane, and they can punish really greedy tri lanes. Uh, so I think they should really be careful for that Lich pick. Lich in the off lane with the Doom there, obviously sacrificing the uh, sacrificing the creep, but just remaining. kind of starving the safe lane farm. Um, Silencer though picked up for not Five Team Fish, of course, we remaining. were looking at that as a sort of pick up for We Kinda Suck. So uh, they've got even more team fight potential there Reserve with those time. three heroes that they've picked up so far. Io though picked up for uh, We Kinda Suck. Um, oh, an Io Tino combo. Wow, this is going to be a fun game, I think. A uh, gyrocopter in the safe lane for the safe lane hero. For Nabals, I think. Someone um, watched the EG game last night, I'm hoping. Uh, or yeah, the I, complexity I caught, game, should I say. I caught, I caught, well, was it, I didn't see the complexity Ten one, I think it was an LGD game. Uh, I caught, I think, uh, I think there was a tiny IO combo. Um, certainly I watched a game remaining. last night in the Shanghai with the tiny IO combo. And uh, yeah, it did, uh, it did do really Reserve well there. Time. Uh, but I mean... We know that these that these heroes together, and I mean Ion plus Doom is no is no bad uh, shout either. To be honest, uh, you could TP in with either of them, and um, you know uh, relocate in with either of them and get that Doom off. Yeah, I have tiny wisp is really good here. We can already see that we kind of suck. Don't really want to team fight. Uh, I have tiny wisp is really good late game. Uh, you can split push. You can really get, take down towers really fast. You don't really need to fight. You can get pickoffs, and no team fish if they. If some of the heroes get picked up, uh, picked off, then they can't really go in team fight because all their heroes are really crucial with their ultimates. So that's a really good pickup for we kind of suck. They also have banned out the Slark, the Spectre, and the Morph, which are all heroes of Paul's. So I mean, they're really looking to shut down the uh, safe lane Ten capacity seconds there. Remaining. Um, for I we kind of suck. Car. Um, and it does look like they're maybe going to run a team one too. We're going to see maybe Tiny Io in the safe lane, or do you think maybe we maybe see them in the mid? And uh, I don't know, man. It, it could be interesting. But Kunika as well. So we've got the call down. We've got the uh, ghost ship. We've got the silencer out plus the arcane curse. We've got Butter Strike into, uh, sorry, Epicenter into Butter Strike. We've got the party ring and also Static Storm. This not Team Fish um, lineup is, uh, is looking pretty seconds, intense as remaining. far as team fight is concerned. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work out for them though. As far Five as hard disables go, uh, only the Sand King and uh, the Gyrocopter for stuns. Uh, obviously, the Reserve Party Ring time. plus Static Storm is going to offer them the silence as well though, and silencers obviously going to offer silences. Um, of course, yeah, of course, the Torrent as well will offer a little bit of stun there. Tiny's combo though, I think, uh, is pretty much going to be able to blow up any of these heroes, uh, even in the late game. I think not Team Fish's uh, draft is pretty greedy. Everybody relies on each other too much, and everybody needs levels for their spells to be fully effective. We're going to have a, a Drow in mid here. Um, is that going to be against uh, Zizan on the Silencer, maybe? I think you're right. That I think Zizan was there was uh, mid before, so I think that's probably called it correctly there. I think we're going to have Drow versus Zizan. Or we could have Paul and Copless in the mid, like I say, with that Io Tiny combo. But that only leaves Drow Ranger with uh, Vengeful Spirit and a solo Doom uh, off lane. Uh, I'm not sure how, how I feel about that. But Uncle Bulgaria once again picks up the Disruptor. Uh, Pitchwife on the Sand King as expected. Nayballs on the Gyrocopter as expected. And it looks like Fuofo will be taking the Kunika into the off lane. Prepare for battle. No DCs for a change, that's good to see. Just walk, look at the, the items that they're picking up here. Um, not seeing any smokes just yet. Wonder, like, neither of these teams have faced off against each other. Obviously, not Team Fish have played quite a few games so far. And, um, 
nothing from uh, I don't really have much to go on about we kind of suck I just know that they're kind of good that's why uh, I wanted to get you guys in here to get your kind of perspective on uh, on these guys like I say they're going to be I think one of the higher tier teams although this red group is going to turn out to be really interesting because I don't know if you guys caught the results but Team Straight also put in commanding performances in this group so be interesting to see how they uh, how they match up Right now, I like the, the dire team better. I think they've sort of realised they're not going to win team fights, and uh, they picked up the draw at the end there to for that extra push. Tiny's going to be doing split pushing with Wisp later on, and when they go to deal, deal with that, they've got a draw here as well to split push another lane if needed. And if yeah, not, she can just farm because she makes a good carry as well. Not doing much with her aura there uh, as far as range heroes go, but I mean we might see some surprising amount of damage coming out of uh, Venge and uh, Wisp because of the, because of that draw pickup. The battle begins. No torrent on the room here for Paul. They're going to still get the room, and they're here? just going to take that back. It's going to be an even trade then. Uh, Paul is uh, going to pick up the room there, uh, and he's going to head into the uh, into the mid. It looks like. And uh, we'll see Copless and Gref in the off lane to start off with. Uh, I imagine that uh, tiny, that. Um, Wisp is going to be all over the map though. Um, and just having a quick look here, it looks like Uncle Bulgaria will go down with Nabal's here and uh, Pitchwife will join him, which leaves uh, Fofo as expected in the solo off lane. I really like this early Dire Ward here in the lane ward in the top left here. Um, just showing them basically whatever Fofo's up to. And uh, not quite qu not quite quick enough to block the uh, camp here, but he will block any uh, stacking on that camp for a while until they figure out it, it's there. Oh no, Io is actually sitting behind the tiny, so that's kind of to be expected, I guess, with the tiny tiny combo. I think they realized the Kanka boarded their small uh, small camp because they saw him walking into the jungle and he was missing for a wee while. So I think they they have a brief idea of where he was and what he was doing. I think they checked his. Uh, uh, Inventory to see if he has a ward or not. So yeah, definitely. They've probably yeah, seen him missing it's with the ward yet. Trouble here, uh, Venge all over him, and I don't know whether or not he's got enough tangos to actually trade evenly with uh, Venge. They're going to be quite happy that he's going to have to expend some of that um, before he even gets a chance to do anything here in the offlane. He's in a pretty dangerous position as well. He's going to have to be careful that he doesn't get picked off um, quite soon. I think. Oh, torrent on to curse this though. And but the drives here with the frost arrows and there's a stun and it looks like Fofo will be the first blood as predicted. He's going to go blood. down. Um, Paul and taking a little bit of damage from Season in the up. mid. I quite like this uh, silencer pickup. Um, it is really nice early harass with the arcane curse spam and uh, the other uh, items. He hasn't even got arcane curse to pick up last word. And I, I think he's going to pay for it here. Um, nah, they're just going to back off. Well, Paul taking a lot of damage though. Early skill points into... Uh, into um, the, uh, the the right click thing. It's got I can't remember the name of it right now. What is it? It's uh, blades of uh, yeah, glaives of wisdom. Glaives of wisdom. Not for you. I don't think the tiny whisper making the most out of this lane just now. The silencer seems to still be getting far, and uh, with a dual lane mid, and the the point on that is to deny the silencer a, a lot of his farm rather than I... just a little bit of it. Yeah, I mean, I can totally see that, but they Radiant's have picked up the, the double the last attack. hits of the silencer, and the silencer is now going to have to leave the lane um, to regen up, and that's going to cost him uh, even more farm there. Uh, early rune, then, it uh, looks like the uh, bounty rune's already been picked up, and there is an invis rune just sitting there waiting to be picked up. Um, that could uh, um, that could lead to some early gank potential. I mean, it's a little bit too early, though, probably, for a rotation. Uh, Copless is going to go and have a look, though. I expect he'll pick up a bottle uh, fairly soon, um, just kind of allowing him to regen that tiny up. Uh, with the uh, link there. Oh, there was another kill there. The Dry Ranger managed to pick off. There was a rotation by uh, the Disruptor to top. And the most Disruptor and Fofo in the top lane there. And uh, missed the first kill there, but uh, they really need to be careful when they're going in against these two guys. Obviously, with once the Venge gets a few points in their aura, and uh, Tyree picks up a few points. Uh, in uh, in the drow aura, we're going to see Radiant's some middle uh, tower is under yes, attack. Right and with the stun slow combo, um, Fofo, I don't know, I don't know how he finds farm in this lane. To be honest, he, he's not really going to be able to farm the uh, hard camp so well as other heroes in the off lane might. And uh, he, I mean, obviously we're seeing the uh, uh, we 
kind of suck making a statement in this game with their early games. With uh, the thing with the con Conquer Offlane is, I used to be a big fan of this, and my, no. my teammates will tell you how much they hate me playing Kunk Offlane. The thing is, uh, Kunk Offlane, it, it needs, like, like I said, uh, all these heroes need too much farm and level. Kunker, like, he doesn't have any sort of escape or, like, getaway when people go on him in the offlane. He gets stunned once, and then he'll, ma he may be, he'll maybe get silenced afterwards as well. And then what can he do to get away? There isn't much, that he doesn't have much opportunities in this offlane, especially against two ranged heroes. No, absolutely, I agree. I don't really rate Kunika too much uh, in any particular position at the moment. Um, obviously, if you're extremely skilled with him and you're able to find farm, he can be pretty devastating. But uh, Silencer picks up the kill on the IO, though. That is going to be a really good kill back for uh, Not Team Fish there. Um, basically, he needed to get something out of this lane because uh, although what you were saying earlier about they weren't doing much, it's now 29 last hits to 9. And uh, even with them pulling the uh, heroes back in behind the tower here, uh, oh, I think he could be in trouble here, actually. Paul doesn't have enough mana for his combo, though, so... Paul's diving too far. Yeah, this is a misplay by him, I think. He's gonna get away with it, though. He's gonna miss the courier as well. Um, yeah, I mean, Zizan maybe could have made more of that. He actually had quite a bit of mana there. Uh, and uh, I don't think he quite realised how low uh, Paul's mana was. It's just a slight misplay, I think, by Zizan. Wasn't able to capitalise on the mistake. A huge mistake made by Paul in her mind. Yeah, if there was a support TP from Mad Disruptor, they probably could have gone a kill on this tiny. Uh, that was a really big dive from him. He had no mana, and I think that was a pretty pretty good chance for Team Fishy to get a kill on tiny and get the mid back in Silencer's control. He's going to rotate now for the uh, for the rune. His, his lane's in a pretty good position for that, I have to say. Um, I don't really I don't really mind. He's just going to miss it, though. There's going to be a regen rune. Um, I'm not sure does he have his bottle? He does have his bottle, so I mean that is gonna that's gonna be useful later on. Um, he is pretty in a pretty good shape as it is as far as mana and hit points are at the moment. And it should give him a little bit of opportunity to uh, to stick around a little bit longer. But Paul gonna have another go, uh, just kinda harassing season here. And like I say, not not able to get in close enough with the way the wave uh, the wave is at the moment. Um, but certainly yeah. almost half his uh, almost half his health down there. Another thing that I like about uh, Tiny Wisp mid is that uh, Tiny doesn't need to control the runes. He's got a support in lane with him to do that. While Wisp is going to secure runes bottom or top, he's just sitting in lane farming. And while Silencer is going to get the runes, he's not farming. So Tiny's always going to have that little bit of farm advantage over him. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing about picking up the bottle on IO as well. Um, he's able to bottle up the, the more useful runes and uh, use, them, use them effectively in that way as well. Pitchwife though, looking to get some, uh, some jungle action on the go. Uh, does leave nade balls in uh, in a little bit of uh, uh, dire straits here against Doom, but I mean I th Doom's not been too aggressive with it at the moment. I don't know if he realises how far away Pitchwife is. Um, no runes. Oh, we got no a wards. TP coming in mid. Oh yeah, this could be something good here. Got three TPs. Yeah, not able to make anything of it just yet, though, unfortunately. Radiant oh, the toss! Oh, that was oh, cool. Oh, nice toss by the tiny. And uh, took the silence right. Fofo in trouble at the back here. Kerstes throws in the stun, followed by the wave of terror. Uh, and uh, it's just going to be enough to finish him off. Uncle Bulgaria comes in with a party ring, but again, he's not going to be able to do anything. Gref does TP in, though. And look at that glimpse back. That has saved Uncle Bulgaria there. And uh, But I mean, I think they got more than enough out of that, regardless of whether or not Gref got anything out of it. Uh, two for O. Uh, in the Radiance top here. tower and, uh, is under yeah, attack. Things are uh, not going well for not Team Fish here. Radiance structures. Yeah, are uh, I think when when the disruptor TP'd in, uh, the West started running attack. back, and I've just noticed there the disruptor has uh, one point in glimpse and two in kinetic field. It, I, I'd say at Radiance this point you'd want one in Thunderstrike attack. and two in glimpse, because no. Uh, no. Max and glimpse first is probably the best way to play disruptor. You, you, you would have had a thousand range on that glimpse instead of just 600. Yeah, absolutely. You need the range there. So mid tower goes down very early there. Uh, not the earliest we've seen so far in this tournament, but certainly very early. Broken. And Paul with a combo, like we said, to blow up any hero, um, especially Silencer. Silencer has not really picked up any items that are going to help him out there. Um, Nayball's in trouble now as well, though. Um, it's a really good dive, though, it seems. Tiny's just got a snowball out of control right now. He's really way ahead of everyone. Um, 
He's getting tanky. He's gonna be able to rotate it with Wisp. When Wisp gets level 6, they won't be able to stop these two anytime soon. So they really need a really fast blink dagger on flanking to actually do something for their team. Fofo in trouble once again at the top here. Tyree just spamming in the uh, ice and getting the big battle off that uh, Kuna cut off so easily. Um, you think uh, Tiny's going to pick up Axe first and just go straight for throne? <laughs> Uh, by the way this game is going, I think that could totally be viable. Yeah, I mean, as far as like as far as I was saying, this uh, this team uh, we kind of suck. Seem to be uh, seem to be much better team as far as experience goes, and uh, I mean it certainly shows here. I feel kind of a little bit sorry for uh, not Team Fish. Tiny's only missing one part from his Aghanims now, so he's really close. That's going to be a super fast Aghanims. Uh, so they'll just start pushing, five man pushing against the uh, Fishy, and they'll be able to get any tower right now. Beautiful stack from Coplis there. Um, I don't think he managed to get it stacked again, though, but there is a double stack there, so Tiny will be able to just run around there and pick that up shortly. This is a double stack camp that he's working on here just now. And uh, Coplis, I mean, really actually doing a lot for the Tiny. Um, really, really good uh, Wisp play here. Uh, not often, like a lot of people will pick up Wisp and uh, not have a clue what to do with it. But I mean, he's stacking all the camps, he's got the bottle, he's controlling the runes. And uh, yeah, I mean, a really impressive play from uh, Coplis and Paul here uh, in, in the jungle. They've, they've sacked the lane for just now, but it doesn't really matter. He's going to be able to find plenty of, uh, plenty of stuff here. But we have got a smoke rotation coming around here from all of Team uh, Not Fish, and they're coming in behind Tyree. And Fofo being the sacrificial lamb, but uh, they've managed to catch out Tyree beautifully here. And uh, they'll be quite happy to have picked up that kill there. Second uh, on the uh, farm for uh, the, whole, the, whole, the whole game at the moment, actually. So good to pick that up there. And I think it was a gyro that got the kill. Um, so definitely good to see the gold going his way. Um, you know, Radiance bottom tower situation. is under attack. Yeah, they committed a lot to that smoke tank, so they really need to get that tier one tower right now. But there's also Doom pushing the tier one bot, so they should yeah, send yeah. someone to defend that tower. I've got uh, Kerstes up here, and if Kerstes can just throw the wave in and uh, just kind of spook them a little bit with this TP. Uh, Radiance bottom tower it, is under they're attack. Not get as much out of that smoke as they could have hoped for. Doom's gonna get this bottom tower as well. Just nobody's there. No TP response, and they're gonna take an easy free tower. Radiance there. bottom tower uh, has yeah. fallen. I mean, so yeah, they picked up the kill on the Tyree, and uh, but they lost it. They lost the tower for it, and now they're just kind of sitting here, not sure what to do. Coplas looking to move up now as well. And is that uh, cursed the jungle? Uh, I think the, the the problem here with Team Fish is that uh, they've or not uh, Team sorry I can't remember their name but uh, Fish, they they picked a team fight uh, they picked a team fight uh, draft and they're looking for this big team fight but uh, sorry what's their name uh, WKS they're just not letting them do it they're just split fish in other lanes. Yeah, oh, Coplis gets blown up though. Uh, Pitch Pythlin oh, and him are sat next to each other skill. pretty much directly there. But we do have a rotation now from Paul. And uh, I think we've got the Ags up on him. We certainly do. We see the tree trunk in his hand there. Uh, the party ring's just off there. Uncle Bulgaria maybe going to pay for it. Oh, I think... Oh, I don't know about that glimpse. I nice glimpse by the disruptor there. I don't know. I think they could have taken Paul with the guys that were around about him. I think they maybe saved him rather than... Uh, yeah, and, uh, nice I, mean, I, th I thought that... Exploded. I thought that was more to get out the fight rather than to continue it, to be honest. Yeah, and they just weren't able to back up though. Uh, uh, the rest of his team, a little bit of miscommunication perhaps. Radiance uh, middle tower to is under attack. And uh, four heroes went down there. And, uh, but I mean, not Team Fish doing well to actually have picked up three kills so far, I have to say. Um, not, not entirely the, the, uh, the absolute stomp that we saw against uh, the Yellow Fellows from Destination Reckon. Radiance top tower is under attack. The uh, thing I wanted to speak about in that last fight is is that when they seen the wisp, they Radiance committed the global fallen. silence onto it, and they committed uh, half of Sand King's Radiance mana. By the time the rest of the team came round, they didn't have a global silence, and Sand King didn't have much mana either. So by the time the by the time the tiny got in there, he could uh, do whatever he wanted, and there was very little fish could do against them because they yeah. just didn't have the resources I mean, to be able to take down a farm tiny. They needed to take the kill on back. 
Um, if they were going to, uh, Radiance were Middle Tower the is under attack. And obviously, if they didn't use the alt, though, uh, Wisp, there was like three or four heroes that the Wisp Radiant just, uh, are fortified. But we've got a little bit of a fight here, and we are going to see a little bit of team fight potential here. Oh, it's not quite enough. Oh, it is! He managed to get the boat in, and that allows them to secure the kill on both the Tiny and the Drag. They've got to be happy with that. There is a relocate out. That Tiny, that IO will be coming back, and they need to be aware that he's coming back. They need to be aware that he's coming back so that they can finish him off. Um, but yeah, that was that was a nice little bit of a defense there. The party ring is up, Coppers is trapped. Pitch wife, you need to be careful that there's no balls on, uh, on uh, the IO. But yeah, they managed to secure the secondary kill there. I always feel, uh, yeah, I always feel, you know, uh, with, it, with the IO, he did uh, relocate out. I think he relocated out Kerstes as well with him. Um, but yeah, I always feel sorry for the fact that, you know, that he's coming back. And uh, you know, it's going to be a sacrificial lamb type situation. Uh, but yeah, I mean that was good. If, I, I mean that was still that was still worked out pretty well for not Team Fish there. Uh, a little bit overconfidence from uh, we kind of suck, and uh, it kind of cost them their two uh, their two main farmers there. And uh, the balls though on um, Pitchwife there, I think he had about 15 hit points. In the game, so I really like to see that. Um, there was no real danger to him, of course. Uh, a lot of people would have backed off. Though. He's then going to get caught no, out a little bit here. No uh, more Pitch Wife's going to come in and try and save the day, but it's actually going to cost him two no kills instead of one. What do you think about that? Do you think he should have just like left it and just went, no, dude, you're dead. There's nothing we can do for you. Um, and, you know. I think what what the play was there was charge up epicenter and then go in and then Kunkka would have been there to follow up and Disruptor was just a little bit far behind him as well Radiance by then another team member could have TP'd and, and uh, Tiny and Drow would have died again and that's exactly what Team Fish are looking for just now those team by elements being used on the big heroes on the other team Do you think Silencer would have still been alive though by the time the epicenter had been charged up? Oh no, Silencer was probably long gone but uh, they would have gotten a uh, 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 a yeah, drought of it they, and they, maybe they, something they else. Is maybe two or three kills for one, and as opposed to zero for one. But yeah, I, I yeah I agree with what I agree with where you're coming from there. That totally that totally makes sense. Beautiful ward in here as well in the jungle, just in the mid there with a the sentry and the obs, obs. They know that there's not any a counter ward there, and uh, that's going to give them commanding control. We got a ward in here as well, and a ward there. The jungle of the uh, radiant is pretty much in the dire's hands now. Uh, do you remember yeah. that game we casted before with Plums? Uh, Plums playing the tiny mid. Oh, I certainly do. Uh, this is quite forget. a, yeah, this is quite a similar game. Uh, there's uh, war, there's wards all over Radiant side of them. So anytime they show up, Tiny and Whisper are just ready to, to kill them because they can pretty much kill anyone at this point. They're where did that smoke? Uh, where did Tiny's they at the top smoke? of the network. Are, are Dyer aware that they smoked up here? I didn't see where the smoke actually was caught, but it should have been underneath the ward. And uh, it happened at kind of the danger here. Here too, boom. Yeah, no, Paul going to be in a little bit of trouble here. He's got so much damage that he is able to kind of sustain a little bit of team fight. Gref going to walk in as well, and uh, it looks like he got glimpsed back actually. Again, not sure about that glimpse. Yeah, there are a couple of heroes that are on low health, but I think they need to pick them off uh, much quicker. Uh, Cursed is here and uh, kind of back. Uh, and uh, Paul's back. Um, uh, that's a triple kill for the time. Uh, I thought Paul died. What the hell? He must have just got away. That's a really good relocate. Um... By by Wisp there to save Tiny. He saved them and managed to turn the team fight around, ah, okay. which allowed the the entire Perfect. WKS team to come Perfect. back in and <laughs> turn the fight. Yeah, Copless definitely showing his chops here as far as being an IO player is concerned, and something that uh, the other teams are going to have to think about banning out. Uh, I mean, having a waste of ban on a Wisp though uh, early on is is Radiance bottom know, especially with, is under with so many other heroes in the meta being considered more powerful. Radiance bottom tower I think uh, Coplis's Wisp this game is done some hero. Like we're giving attack. Tiny all the credit, but Wisp I would say is doing most of the work here. Yeah, he's stacked the camps, he's controlled the uh, rooms, he has relocated on multiple occasions to great effect. And uh, yeah, I mean like I said before, he is gonna get blown up. That is just the uh, that is just the, the nature of the hero. Paul's picked up uh, a Mask of Madness now on Tiny. I think given the situation, the position that they're in in the game and the fact that he's uh, so far ahead as far as uh, his hit points and damage potential is concerned, I don't I don't mind it actually as a pickup. Normally uh, in this particular meta, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but uh, what do you guys think of that? Well, I think the, the Russian choice is really, is really good here. 
it will allow them to go high ground and they're really far ahead now so if they if Tiny gets the Aegis right here they'll just be able to like stand on the high ground and hit the tier 3 without any issues um, they have nothing against that Tiny right now and Wisp is always behind them to back him up or Vengeful Vengeful ultimate is really strong here as well and they can also use Draw to split push any other lane and Team Fishy don't have anything against that right at this moment they're really far behind on items and they're just... WKS is just snowballing out of control at this moment yeah, absolutely, and all the tier 2s are down now as well, so once they get into that base, it literally is going to be curtains for them. So Tyree has actually picked up the Shadow Blade, the Crystallis, and the Dragon Lance on the Drow at this point. The, the Drow actually picked up the Aegis there. I think Paul just feels safe enough that he's, he's not really too bothered. Um, I don't think he thinks he's going to go down anytime soon. Maybe a little bit overconfident there, but there is an Urn and a Medallion on Kerstes. A Mech finished on Gref on the Doom there. Uh, looks kind of like Coplis might be building a Vlad's or a mech as well. And uh, we've got Paul, like I say, with the uh, lifesteal from oh, Asperger's and team also team. the Ags already finished up. I'm curious though that they've backed off here. Uh, I don't know if they maybe, uh, they've got multiple uh, uh, stacks here on the Ancients, triple stacked Ancients. I didn't even notice, uh, I didn't even notice when that happened, but obviously someone's been working away on that in the meantime. Um, yeah, I mean, fair, that's a fair enough, I guess. They go back, pick up the XP, the extra gold there. And uh, the Aegis obviously still going to have plenty of time before they go and throw the final push here. If you look at the XP graph, we've got a 12k swing in XP, and on the gold we've got over 15k. I mean, not Team Fish really kind of getting schooled here um, in, regards to, uh, in regards to the early game. And as you said before, the heroes that they've picked up are so greedy that they've not been able to kind of capitalize on that amazing team fight potential that the team does have there. Pitchwife has managed to pick up his blink dagger. Dyer's middle uh, tower that, is under uh, attack. Not much going on. Fofo's got a crit stick, and there is a Yasha on the gyro, but other than that, no items to speak on. Kyrie, though, going to get caught out a little bit here. He pops the shadow blade and he's just going to make it away. He turns, though, and he's going to go and move over the silence. He will be back in a second, and it's down to. Uh, it's down to the rest of the team to try and have a man, but he is just going to get abandoned. And I think that's pretty much a waste of the ages and two kills that they didn't need to give up. Uh, maybe, like I say, a little bit overconfidence from We Kinda Suck. Uh, what do you guys think of that? Yeah, I think that was a bit greedy play there. They should not really split up. Um, team Fish, you can easily pick them off. Um, they should just stay as 5 and push. Their push is really strong here. And they can easily take their racks and it'll just mean even more even more gold for them yeah i'm not sure about i'm not sure about why they've opted just to head back and start farming here um instead of just going and pushing for the win i think they may have uh i mean yeah i mean they have they, uh, they have the sentry ward still up here but as far as the jungle wards are concerned they only have this one in the lane ward here so, I mean, they're kind of given uh, uh, Not Team Fish kind of a bit too much space to farm up some of those items that will actually start to make a difference here. And, uh, yeah, yeah, like I say, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Yeah, definitely. They can't give them the space on the map anymore. Uh, they can come back. They can get. They can crucially get their level 2 ults up on Silencer and Disruptor. And when Disruptor gets an Agonims, for instance, it's going to be really good. Um, that means no one <laughs> will be able to cast the abilities or anything inside the yeah, Disruptor's static. Uh, static Storm, yeah. I don't know, I see this quite a lot actually with some teams where uh, they are able to secure a lot of early game and then they just kind of think right we're gonna we've made the space we're gonna farm up and um it kind of sometimes not always but sometimes it bites them in the bum but i mean it looks like tiny is very close to picking up his next item uh, i think it's going to be the assault cuirass which is going to turn him into even more of a monster than he already is uh, i will give the R the aura to the team obviously as well once doom picks up a pack leader aura as well um the damage the damage is going to be even more real but they got the party ring to zone them out. They got the uh, epicenter burrow strike combo to kind of stun them, and you know I don't know. Like it's um, they got to be careful. I mean I don't see them losing the game at this particular point in time, but um, if they give uh, if they give uh, not team fish too much uh, too much space, they might they might be surprised. 
Yeah, I think they're just afraid of Gun Hagrid and I guess that uh, team fight uh, potential from Team Fishy. But in that case, they should just try, always try and have all three lanes pushing into them and be able to like have a hero in mid and then like a four man in a different lane to be able to split push them. And Team Fishy won't be able to do anything against that with their lineup. Yeah, that was pretty much the point of the dry pickup that we thought there. Uh, Zizan looking to pick up the. Uh... Yeah, Zizan's done this before, I've seen this before. He builds the um, the, the Atos on Silencer and uh, obviously gives him a little bit extra damage with the intelligence, extra hit points for survivability and uh, gives him a much needed, uh, much needed slow to be able to kite that tiny out. Uncle Bulgaria backed his old tricks, he's starting to pick up a smoke here and we could see a bit of a smoke gank there uh, coming out. Nayballs obviously picked up that Helm of the Dominator to help him stack camps. And um, I mean, item progression wise, Coplis did pick up the Vlads as we expected, and now there is also the Assault Curas on the Tiny, so I mean, maybe that's what they were waiting for together, the uh, the Vlads 15% damage bonus plus the Assault Curas, uh, their team fight is starting to look pretty scary as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They're doing this now. They're making sure that two lanes at least are pushing in. So they'll be able to do some damage to each tower in mid, in mid or bot. Um, it's really good for them. Take the towers really slowly, but secure yourself some extra space on the map. Yeah, just uh, Tyree just chipping away at this tower from the low ground, and that chip damage has actually done about 75% of tower damage without them having to commit uh, anything at all. Um, Paul just throwing in a few creeps there just to kind of keep me balls on a season at bay. Uh, try to create a little bit of space for Tyree to actually uh, do whatever. whatever yeah. they, they have to look out for Vengeful. If Vengeful uses her um, Wave of Terror, they can, she can easily swap out someone like Silenter and she can get like draw or Tiny to stun after the swap and Silenter will just pop and they can just go high ground. Like, does leave Venge in a, a vulnerable situation, but uh, if you swap a core, obviously you're only going to get support for it regardless, and that tower goes down pretty fallen. much for free here. Paul is going to get into the base with the uh, Args on, on the Tiny, and uh, problems here now for uh, Naughty Fish. The party goes up on its Swift, they've well. missed it, Zizan going to be in trouble here, there is actually uh, the ult, the ult so no uh, doom of those well. Ref probably going to get caught out of the back side of this, but he seems to be fine. Uh, Cursed is also taking a little bit of pain. Paul just destroys the racks and able to take out Pitch Wipe as well. He can't hide in the sun and he's still stuck while uh, Radiant's Paul tries to get him. Radiant's bottom barracks are under attack. And, uh, Radiant's bottom they're really kind of, uh, they're pushing him right up to the... Uh, right no! up to the yeah, that's a pretty big dive here, but... They should really go back now and get that tier, t uh, tier 3 in mid lane. They can easily get a Mega Creep right now as of this moment. T uh, Tiny and Ventral have so much damage right now, so there's no point of them waiting to get un to get Megas. Yeah, I mean they could definitely push for throwing. Uh, they had 15 seconds of damage. Radiance middle tower has fallen. It looks like they're gonna play it by the Radiance middle barracks are under. Radiance middle barracks has fallen. Radiance um, middle Coplis barracks is not there, though, has so fallen. Just be the Fengelow swaps the gyro back in, and he gets blown up immediately. Pitch wipe, yes, something about it. And uh, it looks like he might actually get out if uh, no Io is going to pick him off for that amazing Io right click. Radiance top tower <laughs> the, uh, is under attack. There. Paul though, going to get blown up a little bit here. Um, it's not quite going to be enough to finish him off though. There is actually another thunder strike on him. He will go down. Um, it's not. It's too. Looks like yeah, GG. There's no massive. Yeah, that's GG. They had no no ultimates anymore at the end of that fight, so. Team WKS could just push and do damage. They weren't, they weren't afraid of anything at that point. I think at the end there, when uh, when WKS were pushing high ground, uh, a lot of Fishy's ults were missed or they just weren't used properly and they didn't get the right heroes or disable the right heroes they needed to and that in the end lost them the game. Otherwise, if all those ult ults had landed, the game would have been completely turned around. Without a doubt, Cer I think. It certainly, it certainly would have bought them some more time. Um, there was a few, there was like the Disruptor totally whiffed his ult, and uh, Pitch Wives didn't, Epicenter didn't come at much either. Um, yeah, but I mean, so that was game one, guys. Uh, we kind of suck, take the first in the set, and uh, join us in five or ten minutes or so, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see how the uh, Not Team Fish react to, uh, react to this.